this is going to be the way I saw it in my head was that yeah. we've basically locked a cat and a dog in a room together. <laughs> yeah. And we're just going to see what happens. Oh, okay. So you're a wedding videographer. Yeah. I'm a wedding photographer. Yeah. We generally don't like each other. Yeah. That's the rule. We're not allowed to. No. Germans and English. Um, let's just get started with where you, what was your first wedding? How did you get into shooting weddings? So how did I get, I started, well, I came out of uni. Yeah. I absolutely hated my course. And what were you studying? Visual effects, motion graphics. So okay. it's special effects and CGI and films. So for that, I needed to use a camera constantly filming things. The bit I loved was using the camera and filming, but I hated all the time consuming editing. So I, the record was I spent four months editing five seconds worth of footage. I had to put Wait, hang on four months for five seconds, five seconds of footage. So in one second of footage, there's 25 frames. So I had to go in every single frame and I had to cut bits out and put a brick wall in the background. So just, so what's that? Five, five seconds times 25 frames a second. That's, that's a load of photos, essentially, I have to do this for. Right. So you're so, a photo editor rather than... Technically, yeah. Yeah, right. So okay. I edit all these cracks into this brick wall, and which I think is kind of pointless, but we need to do it to make it look realistic. And then after I've done that, they say, to make this shot look even better, we need to add depth of field. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, so we're going to blur the background. So you can't see the cracks I've been doing. Oh, so you <laughs> did all that work and then you just, just yeah. knocking it away. I was away, like, no, right? so I can... D- I can do it. So, um, so I had a friend get married and they said, you can use a camera. Could you try and make this wedding video? And I was like, I've never done it before, but I was like, I'll give it a go. I was like, I've also never been to a wedding before. So I was like, well, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. So I knew the photographer actually. So I said to him, the couple want me to come along and do them a wedding video. I've never done one before. Is it okay if I come along with you? I was like, it'd be great if you could give me like show me the ropes as well because I've got no idea what I'm really doing right and he was like yeah sure let's give it a go and so I made the wedding video and I thought it looked pretty good overall like the couple absolutely love it yeah but to this so I've been doing weddings for three years now and I still look back on it and there's bits of it that I think are outstanding there's some bits which are absolutely terrible <laughs> yeah but yeah. Is it, is the bits that are terrible though is that the result of not really knowing the flow of the day 100% yeah, yeah. So it's, it's bits like the bride and also the venue. So the venue, it was a winter's day and the ceremony was meant to be outside, but we ended up doing it inside yep. and it's a really small dark room. So there wasn't enough room for a videographer and photographer to both be at the front to film the bride entering. So obviously as the photographer was being paid for, he said, basically, you're doing it for free sort of thing. So do you want, do you want to just stand up the back so you're not in the way? And I was like, yeah, of course it's completely fine. And then I quickly realized that you can't, film a bride walking up the aisle yep. from behind because yep. <laughs> you just, you don't give a shot. So it's just little things like that and yeah. learning sort of just, yeah, learning how the day really worked. So I was sort of a step behind knowing what was always going to happen next. It's so much of it's not camera related, right? Yeah. Weddings is, it, you have to know people and uh, expectations yeah. and, you know, I think every wedding's different, but there's also like the same personalities at a lot of weddings. hundred percent. Um, you get like the guy that is absolutely like contributing zero to the day, but (laughs) is pissed off that he has to do one group photo and you you have to like negotiate with him or, you know, things like that. I think you you just learn that with time. Do you find yourself now, how many are you shooting a year at the moment? I'm shooting around 35 to 40. That's pretty good. Yeah. Are you, are you still finding yourself surprised on like per wedding? Are you finding like new stuff out every time or? No. So no, I say I sort of, I would say it's sort of like a routine. So I, I prepare the exact same way for majority of weddings. Yep. And although every wedding is different in so many ways, you've still got a basic template to it. So obviously the preparation of the morning, you've got your ceremony and then you've got your drinks receptions Then either the, the breakfast or the speeches before the breakfast. Yep. And then we go into the first dance and that's, and the cake cutting. So it's, Every wedding's still going to be like that, yep. but it's just how each person makes it unique to them. So I know I can nail all of those things, so I'm not too not too concerned really. When it's it sometimes it's about just working with usually one of those things is the most important part for them. Yeah, that's and it. sometimes it can throw you out because you're like <laughs> the ceremony is a big deal. Yeah. And you, I find quite I wouldn't say quite regularly, but more regularly than you would think, I get 
couples are like, we don't care about the ceremony. That's just the legal bit. That's just, you know, it's a party. And yeah. it's like, okay, so we got to be more people focused here. Yeah. Don't don't go mad at the ceremony. Just hit the key beats. And then yeah. from there, you know, it's a lot about capturing the personality of, of what people are doing. Yeah. Um, we've worked together once. Um, and we will, I think, I don't even know if you realize, but we're going to work together more than one more time for definite because I know you're booked on another one that I'm booked for. Oh yeah. Cause we, you are, um, the only videographer that we currently recommend, yeah. um, is yourself and a fellow called Chris Bennett films. Who's I think Sussex. Yeah. Um, and we only sort of recommend him for Sussex stuff. Cause I don't, I didn't know, I didn't get to know him well enough to know exactly where his range yeah. is or where he can go. Yeah. Um, and the reason that we recommend you on top of the fact that we've obviously seen your work. And I think one thing that is quite important is that there is at least some kind of through line in style between the photographer and the videographer. Definitely. Um, is that I think we worked fairly similarly in the sense of not wanting the fourth wall to be constantly broken, yeah. not massive over direction. Um, and a lot of it was just about capturing sort of what was happening on the day. Yeah. I also, th I also felt that there was a lot of times which would have been sticking points with other videographers where I was in your way or you were in my way. And we just sensed that we were in each other's sort of way. And we found yeah. a different way around shooting yeah. so that we weren't blocking each other. Normally that's something that ends up having to be like a discussion mm. where it should just be like, a, Oh, I'm in the way I'll jump or, yeah. you know, whatever. But like at the, I don't know if you can remember, at the very start of the day, we had a quick, we had a quick chat and we basically said how we both work. And yeah. I said, I'm, I try and hang out in the background sort of thing, capturing all the natural moments, not too much direction at all. And I said, if I ever get in your way, just like, give me a nudge or yeah. tell me. And you said the exact same thing. So I think from the start, we were on the same page. And yeah. then I know when I'm filming, I'm always sort of looking, I'm looking around for you to make sure I'm not trying to jump in your shot. And at the same time, I caught you doing that a few times when you were taking pictures, like you'd turn your head to check you're not in my way. Yeah. So I think that's sort of like we're both aware of each other the whole time. And Yeah, yeah. and I, th I think from the way we work, I mean, we're very, we being me and Jamila, yeah. we're very quick with things like couple photos. We don't, we don't want to spend an hour doing that stuff. We don't yeah. want to spend half an hour doing that stuff if we don't have to, because um, we always say that you start to lose the ability to draw honest reactions. Yeah. It starts to get tiring for the couple as well as for us. Definitely. Um, and you can get a lot from that initial 15, 20 minutes, yeah. more than you could ever really need. Uh, I could go back to the wedding we did together and put together an entire another wedding out of images I didn't use. Yeah. Um, because firstly, they were a great couple great venue. Everything about that day generally went pretty much perfectly. We, we refer to that as, best wedding ever. Yeah. Um, because I don't do names. Yeah. Um, but there was so much we could do over that time, but having the sense from, from my point of view, the sense to say, I know I've got enough of this particular sort of part of the couple's photos. Do you want to do anything here and yeah. let you run with it? Yeah. And then like, we kind of relayed like that. You, you had an idea, which actually ended up being one of my, favorite photos that we got, which was, uh, sending them around the other side of the little the lake. lake thing. Yeah. Um, and the, there was the tree and they, they had a little kiss under a tree yeah. and it just happened completely by us not paying attention when we should have done that it mimicked what the wedding cake, uh, decoration. Yeah. We got a photo that mimicked it. And it, the thing is, it was complete bullshit that we meant to do that. <laughs> that was like Jamila took the photo because yeah. I'd walked a couple round. Yeah. And, um, I was like, shoot at Jamila. And she started taking pictures. And when we looked afterwards, Jamila went, Oh, that kind of looks like the cake. And I was like, Oh shit. Like we, yeah, we meant to do that. <laughs> we nailed that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it was, it was, um, it was it was a really good day. I remember saving the wedding. I will say yeah. that I'm going to get this on rec recording if I if it kills me. Yeah. But where their um, ceremony was was on that like jetty little island thing, little island yeah. thing, and the the registrar let the certificate blow, and it literally <laughs> almost went in through the gap yeah. in the fence, the water, you caught and it I your, caught it, yeah. and I put my lens on top of it, and then just carried on completely casually. Yeah. And in my head, while I was shooting the rest of the ceremony, I was like, don't bring it up. 
Don't need to bring it up. Yeah. We got off the island and the first thing is like, oh, I saved your wedding. I just could not <laughs> hold it back. I was you so- You got to do it. Claim it. Yeah. Claim it. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So you said about 35, 40 this year? Uh, no. So that's what I typically do. So as a videographer, I find quite a lot of my bookings are last minute. So it's a bit scary really of, am I going to make it this year? Sort yeah, of thing. yeah. So I walked into, I came into 2020 with- 19 bookings so i sort of i have enough to live off at that point and everything else is extra but um but yeah so i get majority of my bookings since then so since january i think i've had eight or nine bookings so it's it's yeah it's creeping up it's doing really quite well why do you think that is it why, why is it why is it a delayed sort of thing quite videography is still sort of seen as a last minute thing so if we have any money left in the budget right let's get it done so if you on quite a lot of blogs if when the brides and grooms are Googling what sort of things we need for our wedding and everything, a lot of it's the, the most regret, sorry, the thing they regret the most is not getting a wedding video you'll find. Yep. And they quite often realise that quite late down in the line and we're like, oh, we've still got a little bit of spare money left or can we scrape something together? Let's get a video. And I partly think, I think it's pretty much that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously... I remember having a wedding beginning of last year in um, Amberley in Sussex and one yeah. of the bridesmaids um, asked about a videographer and that was where we met uh, uh, Chris Bennett. Yeah. And he turned up a little bit after that and she said that she wouldn't have a photographer, she'd just have a videographer. And I was like, okay. And then she like really went in on me with it and I was like, <laughs> okay, it's like, I'm not coming to your wedding. Calm down. It's yeah. fine. Um, I think that the the photographer is the prerequisite. So I think there's no room to regret not getting a photographer because yeah. no one doesn't get a photographer. Yeah. It's, you book the venue, you book your photographer, so yeah. it works. Yeah, exactly. And I think the videography is going to take a bit of time to kind of be grandfathered in as a as a prerequisite yeah. idea. Um, one thing I will say, and I think probably the biggest point of contention we might have, although you might agree with me, I'm actually interested to hear your side yeah. from the other angle. Most, and I really do mean most, wedding videographers we've worked with are at best unprofessional and yeah. at worst incompetent assholes. <laughs> um, there is a lot of what I would call like Dixon's videographers where they've gone out, bought the cheapest thing they can and they just, they just, this, I think they're so um, insecure about their ability and they, I think like one thing I will say, and I don't know yeah. if you agree with me, if you have any holes in, in your technical ability, a wedding will find it at the first opportunity and punish you. Yeah. Right. Like you, if you don't know how to do something, a wedding will find a way to make you feel like shit for not knowing how to do it. <laughs> um, and I just see it so often where videographers who are probably at the lower end of the sort of budgetary scale, mm -hmm. um, I bloody hope they are. <laughs> they um they get the, they have to repose and redo and move every single thing that happens over the course of the day because their equipment can't do stuff in certain you know certain okay. conditions or they just don't know how to do the job yeah um, and catch things in the moment you know like making dad walk in three times to see the bride and it's like he's yeah. not an actor you have to capture that the first time there's yeah. some stuff I understand to an extent. But you know, why do you think why do you think I'm so pissed off about videographers? <laughs> I don't know what my question could be at the end of that. Um it sounds like you've sort of experienced some cowboys. Yes. <laughs> so um I don't know. So we've got a Facebook group of all us of videographers. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got two of them. I probably shouldn't say about the secret one because it's secret. I was group. gonna say, have you got have you got a general one and a good one? <laughs> yeah, we've got a general one and a good one. And the good one's actually called the secret group. Um right. secret group's got probably about 30 of us in it. Yep. And it's just because a general one is full of there's so many assholes in there and everyone with a big egos. But um there are there obviously are, is a few cowboys out there, but the majority of the videographers that I speak to, because obviously I don't really get to work with them at a wedding yep. unless either I'm helping them or they're helping me. The majority of them seem completely fine. I just think there are a few complete cowboys out there. Either but I'm on I'm on the best run of luck ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I photographers wise, I think I've only had I've only had one I've only worked with 
Well, it was a cup. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was. Oh, it could be. It was the hottest day of the year. So it was. I think it was 30, 38 degrees. Yeah. And the whole wedding was outside, and it was scorching hot. And the, oh, I, I don't want to sound bad, but the photographers weren't. They weren't British. So okay. I don't, I don't know if that that was it. But I I spoke to them beforehand, and I warned them, and I said. Um, I said, Hey, I'm going to be filming this. I was like, I'd love to work alongside you guys. Like, let me know if I'm your way. And at that point, all photographers say back, yeah, that's great. If I'm in your way, let me know. Yeah. And they didn't say that. And I was like, that's the first red flag Ooh. in my head. And I was like, okay, we'll see how this goes. And they were just constantly getting the whole way the whole time. And so do I you think, said, do you think intentionally or just ignorantly? I think ig- ignorantly, right. but I may, I, it was partly intentional too. So obviously when you have the first kiss, yeah, I, I film it from two different angles. So the back of the aisle and from the front and I was stood at the back of the aisle with the camera, with the photographer next to me and they're about to kiss. I was like, they're about to kiss. I was like, please don't step in front of my camera for this because of, like, I want to capture the shot here. And he had a big zoom lens on, so he could have easily got the shot. And do you know what he does? He switches to his wide angle lens and steps in front of my camera. And I was just like, her? I was like, I've, t- I've asked you not to. And I was like, you- it was obvious at this point. And I was yeah. just like, he turned around and looked at me and smiled afterwards. Like it was a, it wasn't like a, like a screw like a, you smile. Like a dominance thing. No, it or... was just, it was like a friendly smile. Like he had no idea. Oh, what he's he a just, sociopath. Yeah, like <laughs> what he just done. <laughs> like, oh my God. Right. <laughs> so um, at the end of it, like, oh, we loved working with you. Give us, give us your card. So we recommend you to everyone. And it was a, at that point, I was like, yeah, well, I'll come back in a minute and give you a card. And yeah. I never did. So I nah, you never, don't want to get another no, wedding with them. No. But that's, that's the only bad photographers. You're going to walk with. in at some point to a bride prep and see them and you're going to be yeah. like, ah, oh, balls. <laughs> yeah. I was taking that side at that point and I'm like, right, let's get this down here. Yeah. First kiss is mine. If you stand in front of that first kiss, I'm going to find your family. <laughs> I'm coming for you. And we've had, to be fair, probably 10 atrocious ones yeah um so we do so there is a volume issue here as well so we do photograph about 65 weddings a year which meant that's a lot of weddings yeah i like my job I, yeah. i've had loads of people that are like oh you should charge more then you wouldn't have to do as much it's yeah. like no no because i know i would be doing yeah. 65 for more money yeah but also the type of wedding you do is different i think people see pay as it's only more or less whereas actually there are certain pay points where you end up at yeah. certain types of weddings and yeah. I like my bracket. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not looking to shift my bracket too hard at all. Yeah. Um, but we shoot about 65 a year. Um, you can always tell pretty instantly how the videographer is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's one I've worked with twice who I now can't imagine him not looking at his phone. <laughs> like I can't okay. I can't imagine what he did and so one thing he did yeah um and there's a really good lesson in this for uh what to do on a wedding day when something completely hits the fan yeah to save yourself so a uh, church up on a hill very steep set of old steps coming down and they were going to do the confetti walking down those steps right not the smartest thing in the world <laughs> but that's not. what they've got and you you yeah. If you're like right now, if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, oh fuck, imagine walking down those stairs while people throw confetti at you. Imagine walking backwards. That's what I instantly thought yeah. of, but us walking yeah. backwards. Well, for the, for the people that haven't <laughs> gone through our hell. Um, so the fella, the videographer yeah. touched my camera right before we started. And I didn't, I thought it was weird. I've got a personal space thing, Yeah, but I didn't think much of it. What kind of touch we are like? We're talking actually tapped like, it or put his hand on my camera, which was on a on a strap. Oh, yeah, it's a bit strange. But he was like making out that he, I think he was trying to make out that he had to move it to get past me. Um, um, in the process, he also walked into the bride and almost knocked her over and didn't even <laughs> apologize. Very strange I, guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he touched my camera. I don't think anything of it. We go outside i do my usual three jokes because i've only got like three or four yep and uh we do the confetti walk yeah i get about three quarters of the way through i'm shooting dslr at this point i look down and i realize everything is wildly out of focus and he's he's turned off my autofocus and i just because i've gone out and i've prepped the people and then just started shooting and i'd already checked my settings yeah yeah. didn't give it a second thought i mean once it's on manual focus it will it will take pictures out of focus as yeah, well. Yeah. So autofocus won't physically do it. So. Exactly. So 
I realize I'm fucked. Yeah. Like without, as a wedding, like you have that, that stone hit your stomach. Yeah, like, and I was like, and, and I stopped him and I think I can only get away with this. And there's only a few people that could probably get away with this. Yeah. What I did was I went, right, stop. And the couple stopped. And I was like, that wasn't good enough. Oh yeah. yeah. And I turned them around and had them walk back up the stairs yeah. and what confetti was left was being thrown. And as they walked through, they grabbed their little boy yeah. So I got the pictures of them with the little boy with the confetti being thrown. Yeah. And I was like, thank God I had without like to not to pump my own trumpet here, but yeah. thank God I had the the temerity to say stop, but not to say I've got a huge fucking problem. Please save yeah. me from this nightmare. Yeah. I I just ran with the first idea that came in my head and we managed to get the shot. Um, but he did all sorts of stuff. He disappeared for parts of the day and yeah. Was out, sat on his car. He sat on like the roof of his car on his phone <laughs> while those speeches were about to what? start. And we had to go and find him. To, yeah. Like the groom was with me looking for him. And How, what sort of age was he out of curiosity? About 50. 50? Yeah. Because when you said like he's always on his phone. Yeah, no, you're, thinking, you're thinking 21 yeah. year old. I said, I'm 25. So I'm sort of, I'm in that generation. But yeah. obviously, I'm very aware and I'm not always on my phone at a wedding. So I do, I keep all, my, all the notes from a wedding on my phone so I can quick and easily check them. Yeah. But yeah, being on your phone the whole time. No, do you reckon? Right, quick, real talk here. Do you reckon <laughs> he knocked the autofocus manual on purpose? Yes, or? I do. Absolutely, Ab- uh, absolutely. Yeah. It was like the the. So obviously, because I'm telling this story in hindsight, yeah. When he touched my camera at the time, I just thought, "Don't touch my camera." Yeah, I didn't think he just touched my camera to do something yeah. bad, but it, there's no other reason. No. See, I had I worked with a photographer, I think a couple of years ago, and he joked saying, um, if you get in my way, I'll knock your I'll knock your focus onto manual focus. Right. And he was he was lovely. He was saying it only as a joke. Yeah. But ever since that sort of got stuck in my head and I've always been paranoid. Whenever someone touches my equipment, yeah. The first thing I do is check. But like I use Sony and quite a lot of Sony lenses. It's not on have, the lens. Yeah, yeah. So it's in the camera. So this was Sigma. Yeah. So it is on there. Yeah. Um But saying this, I had a so I, I bring multiple lenses to a wedding like we all do. And one of my lenses towards the end of the day, just before first dance, stopped focusing. And I, I dropped it recently that day and I thought, oh, this is it. It's broken. And I was, I was raging. I knew the price of getting it repaired was about 50 pounds off buying a brand new one. Yeah. So I just, I put it, I roughly like threw it into my camera bag and a bit of a strop with it, like for Christ's sake. And then I saw it in the camera bag and I realized it has a switch on it for manual and autofocus. Right. And I knocked it to manual focus. And That's after, a lot cheaper to repair. Yeah. But after <laughs> shaking the lens around vigorously, hitting it, trying to get it to work. Well, that's how like, you fix oh. things. You have to hit it yeah. and shout at it. Um, you're Sony, right? Yeah, yeah. So always been Sony with weddings? Yeah, yeah. How do you find it? You enjoy it? Yeah, absolutely love it. I'm... So I know when we worked together, yeah. you were on Fuji at the time. No, I was Canon looking Fuji. into Fuji. So I had a Fuji with me. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we had a chat about that. And yeah. I basically at, at that point I was, I used a few weddings to shoot some stuff with Fuji yeah. to see how it behaved. Yeah. Um, but I actually switched to Fuji after that. Okay. And I'm now Sony. But I just want to quickly add to that about... Yes how you're saying just experimenting with a camera for weddings. Yeah. I think we've got to a point with all of these cameras that no matter what you use, you're going to get incredible photos and videos. Yeah. It's just about which, which tool personally suits your style of working. Yeah. It's which one gets out of the way the most. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, I love Canon. Yeah. Deeply. But looking at it in a long game sense, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So I, I, Whilst I was at college, you know, I did photography at college, then obviously um, visual effects in uni. So I was always using, I did photography and videography. And oh, you're a videographer. You're supposed to say with like one eyebrow raised, like you're all cool and different. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I do stills as well as video. Oh, yeah. You have to say stills. <laughs> oh, stills. Okay. Well, no. Um, so I know, well, I roughly know how to take a picture. So yeah. um, I used to have a Canon DSLR. So I always start off with Canon. And I absolutely loved the like the color science of the camera. Yeah. And but when it came to video, I was looking at my Canon DSLR. I was like, this is absolutely crap. So I looked around and I swapped to Sony because Sony was the right thing. But for about the first year and a half of having Sony, 
I was constantly checking to see what can cameras Canon were bringing out. Yeah. And at the first chance, I'd have jumped back to Canon in a heartbeat because yeah. it, it, it looks so beautiful. And then, well, it's been four years now and they, there's rumors that they're going to bring out a mirrorless, um, the, I can't remember what it's called. It's a mirrorless, mirrorless camera and it's going to film, I think, up to 8K. The R5. Yeah. The R5 yeah. dual card because yeah. they brought out the the R and yeah. everyone went... Single card. Yeah, yeah, single card. Great. Professional price, completely unprofessional specs. Yeah. Brilliant. Top top work. Yeah. So the people you've got up in the offices are really doing their job. <laughs> um, and, and everyone complained about it. And then the R5 is basically the five the 5D line yeah. version that's going to take over, I think. See, now I think that has real potential. If they can deliver it... The problem will be... I, I I completely agree that in terms yeah. of what it can do, it will be amazing. Yeah. The problem will be the fact that you'll have to drop 10 grand and have a camera bag that weighs the same as a small boat mm. to have glass for it yeah. or go adapted, which means you're compromising on that. That's what just frustrates me. I just yeah. wish that they would, you know, Nikon, Canon, they don't make the majority of their money from consumer electronics. No. You know, they provide glass for, um, you know, like, I know Nikon does a lot of medical glass and that's like millions more for yeah. that than they get for consumer electrics. So why does the profit margin have to be so high on consumer electrics? Why can't you, you know, why can't you not undercut the market, but just put stuff at a slightly fairer point? If Sony can do stuff, if Fuji can do stuff yeah. and Panasonic, who I'll never bother with because I just, <laughs> it's an IT guy's camera. Yeah. Um, if they're able to do stuff at a certain price point, you must be able to. Yeah. Because Canon at the, at the moment, they can't seem to decide whether they want to be Sony or Hasselblad. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. That's what frustrates me. But I found interesting thing video-wise is, so all of these brands have professional, what they call professional video cameras, which is the really big, big cameras. I, I have one, I use it for corporate work. But Sony FS7. Yeah, FS5, yeah. FS7. But I don't, I don't take it to weddings because of its giant, it gets in the way, it's big and clunky. Yeah. And I think it's video wise, the brand, as soon as they bring out a camera with that good a spec, they've put out, they've put themselves out of business. Yeah. They cannibalized the range. Yeah. yeah. But then you've got Fuji who haven't got that at all. They haven't got their professional camera yeah. line and they're dropping cameras with really good specs at really good prices. Yeah. So I'm with just, decent glass as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy to not have Fuji stuff right now. Um, yeah. And I will be getting something for like my street photography and whatnot. But yeah. um, we did our first wedding yesterday with the Sony. For me, the first time I've ever shot Sony at a wedding. And what do you think of it? Or how, let's narrow it down. What did you think of the autofocus? I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The face detect is leagues above anyone yeah. else. And like eye tracking. Yeah. And yeah. like when you, when have you ever used a Fuji? No, I haven't. So the face detect on there, I, I think they should call it vague detect. <laughs> um, and I'm going to get so many people that don't take pictures, but I mean, a lot of cameras complain. Yeah. But yeah. You really are. <laughs> it is like the face detect on there. It will like find a face. Okay. You don't kind of really get any comprehensibly usable way of choosing which face. Yeah. yeah. Um, and at times it will just go, no, and you just get nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was never, I never skimped on lenses. I never skimped on the range that I had. I had the top yeah. range that they had at the time. The lens is what makes it though. So you, you can yeah. go and buy a stupid expensive camera. You stick a crap lens on it yeah. and it looks like an iPhone. Well, one of the things I said when we, we, when I was forced at gunpoint to switch to Sony by Jamila. <laughs> good um, yeah. Good for her. was, uh, I wanted the Sigmas because yeah. I liked having the Sigmas on the can and I actually just liked, there's a lot of character to them. Yeah. Um, I know that there's, um, there's plenty of virgins in basements that don't like them <laughs> because, you know, they're third party or, or you yeah. know, whatever. But I, I actually just like the character to them. So the, the Sigma 35 is one of my favorite ever lenses ever, ever. Yeah. Um, I switched from Canon's L lens the 35L yeah. to the Sigma because I preferred it okay. character wise. Um, the 20 mil um, has a really decent close focusing. Yeah. So you can do some kind of interesting faux macro stuff. Yeah. Um, and I now have the 85, which I'd never had, which yeah. on the Sony is bananas how big it is. Every, like I put it on for, I did a, a workshop on Saturday yeah. 
And the the model at the workshop was like, is that a 70 to 200? I was like, no, <laughs> it's a fucking 85. Like, it's so big. It's ridiculous. I don't think it's that big. It's big. Wait, it, but 85, 1.8? Uh, the, no, no, no. The Sigma 85 1.4. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about the it's Sony. It's on the table oh, in front yeah. of you. Sorry, and no, it's I the thought... biggest lens on the table in front of you. I thought you were talking about the Sony. Oh, no, no, sorry, no, yeah. no, no, no. So the Sony stuff that we have, I think we only have the 28mm f2 as like a backup. That's the, that's, yeah, it's a nice lens. It's a very nice lens. It's a good, for the price, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, and we have a couple of Sam Yangs. We've got the 45 1.8 and the 85 1.4. Yeah. The 85 1.4 for the price, uh, anyone that's photographing um stills yeah for the videographers that are listening stills, <laughs> stills. non-video i would say it's brilliant yeah. although i've heard it's absolutely atrocious for video which yeah. is fair enough because not so, everything can do everything so the sony lenses are incredible autofocus wise for video and i've tried using a canon lens on an adapter and the focus of it was absolutely appalling yep but I'd be, after this, I'm going to have a quick play of yours and see what yep. the Sigma's like, because I really like Sigma lenses. Yeah. So if it's any good, I might, because I really quite want a nice, a nice 20 mil lens. So I've got, I've got the 28 F2, what you've got there, the Sony one. Yeah. But it's not quite wide enough what I want. So I, so I did a, I went to the photography show back in 2016. Yeah. Um, and it was exactly what I expected it to be. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. It was... Yeah. Everything you've ever thought. Okay, if you if you drew a cartoon character in your mind right now of yeah. a photographer, there was about two hundred thousand <laughs> of them there. Yeah. Um, but I watched a wedding to get away from people trying to sell me stuff or old people trying to take pictures of young girls <laughs> in shit conference center lighting. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, like just put the fucking model. Yeah. Um I went and watched a wedding seminar yeah. with a, a Jewish wedding photographer. And he said that the the biggest change to his photography and the thing that broke him like to a new level and pushed through a wall was he shot exclusively on a 20 mil lens at several weddings. Okay. And I was like, fuck, like 20 mil. That's, 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 that's tight. Why. Like you have to get in there yeah. for that. Um that's a, that's a really wide lens. Really wide <laughs> lens. You've got distortion problems. Yeah. The fact is, if you want to do like a two person, if you want to do like a like a, a two person shot, you're all with them. Yeah, it's a three person shot because yeah. you're in there. Um, and I immediately left that seminar. His pictures were amazing. Yeah, and he was in there photographing these moments. And he said one of the things is is that if you do something from like a medium distance, and people that don't like to be like photographed or recorded in any way, see you, they'll become very defensive towards you. So, but when you're that close to someone, you're forced to interact with them before okay. and after. That's interesting. And they're a lot more happy with you being there if you've interacted with them yeah. and you're close rather than it's, if he said, it feels like you're stealing from them if you do it from a distance, but they catch you. Yeah. And I kind of see the point. I, yeah. I do think that there are obviously different ways of viewing different things. Uh, the first thing I did was when I looked for a 20 mil, I was like, what 20 mils can you even get on Canon? <laughs> Canon did a really awful uh, 20 mil 2.8 um, that was just soft as all hell yeah. from from anywhere from like the dead middle out. Um, and then the Sigma had just sort of started, I think they just started shipping their 20 mil. So I had to go on one at the show and I was like, this is this is phenomenal. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I was like, as soon as I've got the money that I can not get killed by my wife for doing, I'm going to go and get one. Yeah. The first one I had ended up at the bottom of the ocean while I saved an old man. No, it's genuinely a true story. Decision. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Looking back on it, I was, it's, um, I, so I studied law when I was, uh, when I just left school. Yeah. And one of the things that the, um, the solicitor that taught us told, told everybody was that if you're going to run someone over, at a zebra crossing, hit the oldest person there because chances are it will be the least damaging in terms of how much time you'll get. <laughs> he said, because, you know, if you hit a, an 18 year old um, brain surgery student, yeah, they're going to be deemed to be a lot more valuable than like a pensioner that's on their way out. And I was like, well, that's dark. Yeah. Um, that's a, I think as a floor in society, though, it's, it should still be the whole you've ran someone over and killed them yeah, no matter who yeah, they are. Yeah, exactly. Um, and looking back on it, maybe I should have saved the lenses, but I lost about two and a half, three grand's worth of gear that day. 
Um, yeah. And in fact, when I got the bag out, I saw the bag drifting and I had to run back in to get the bag. Um, <laughs> and I let Jamila smash the 20 mil with a hammer for fun. But I didn't tell anybody when I posted the video of her doing it that it was already broken. Yeah. So I had a few people who were like, there's loads of us that can't even afford gear like this yeah. and you're doing stupid <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, I would definitely recommend the 20 mil Sigma. It's, yeah. it's got a wicked character to it. Okay. Um, and like I say, the close focusing, like when you do the detail stuff, like you saw Jamila doing, like she does what she calls lay, the lay flat. flats. Yeah. 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 Um, the detail stuff yeah. that you can do with that is phenomenal. Um, it's a really cool lens. Well, I started. I don't uh, work for them. Yeah. <laughs> Just to well, clarify. Yeah, pay that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so the wedding we did, I started the video with the lay flat actually. Yeah. And I started pretty close and just panned across it. And I absolutely love that. And I've done it a few weddings since. And yeah. it was, yeah. It, it, it nails, adds so much. I've had yeah. bookings where, especially when you think that the company's in my name and I'm like the top photographer. And <laughs> I've had people that have booked us and like, we want to book you because we love the the photos of shoes and jewelry and dresses. And I'm like, okay, cool. I don't do any of that. Yeah, I was going to say, when that happened, you weren't in the room. <laughs> yeah. I sometimes walk in and make sure she's okay. Yeah. I carry stuff. But, um, no, it's, it's, it's added so much dimension. I think um, I don't, I'd be curious to know how you go about this, but when you're looking at ways to kind of improve your work, do yeah. you like, do you go like technique based? Do you try and learn some kind of new technique and incorporate it? Or like what, what I tend to do is I break a wedding day down into sections. So like prep and ceremony and so on and so on. Yeah. And I'll focus on one thing for a short period of time. I'm like, that's my weakest point. I need to do something with the ceremony to improve there. And I'll work through ideas yeah. at ceremonies for like the next month and then see where I've stood and what's worked and what hasn't. What's your approach to improving? Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. So I I watch quite a lot of other wedding, video, uh, wedding videographers work and I watch a lot of the top end stuff. So like the, the really big, big high end wedding video, videographers. So I sort of see what I'm doing differently yep. and I try, because obviously I don't want to copy them exactly, but there's certain things. But I think a big part of video is editing so I think you can always change and work on improving your editing. So at the moment, I feel in my highlight videos, I love how I put a good chunk. I put about 30, no, about 45 seconds to a minute and 20 seconds of the ceremony in the middle of a highlight video. And I really like that. But I'm thinking, well, actually, that's a big chunk of a highlight to be used up now. So this year, 2020, I'm really trying to cut that down. So right. I'm using more of the audio in the background of a video instead of showing as much. Oh, so like J see, cuts and L cuts kind of thing. Yeah, so you get to see more. You impressed with me a little bit there. Just yeah, a little so, bit. Yeah, Come on. Like, you Googled that, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> but, I, I, I literally have watched a wedding videographer on YouTube a few times. Yeah. Um, and I like his work. I find him <laughs> reprehensibly annoying. Yeah. Um, Because he's like, he looks like every Mumford and Sons fan <laughs> all smashed into one person. But his his work is brilliant. Yeah. And he does a thing where he gets the couples to write a letter to each other. Yes. In America, this is absolutely massive. Yeah. And I love this. And I've I've got one couple that are going to do it this year. Nice. And I'm, I'm so excited about it. It's hard in England culturally to convince especially men to do stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's like, they will just read it sarcastically or they'd put something in it that when it's read out just yeah. doesn't go with the tone. And I, I sort of, whenever I meet the couples or FaceTime them beforehand, I try and educate them over what makes a good video. Yeah. And I really express, I say, I know like everyone's going to be around you and you're going to be reading a speech. It's going to be a bit scary. But if you give me something that is, even if it's like 20 seconds long, packed full of emotion and like really deep from your heart, that's going to make an awesome wedding video, but you guys are going to cry when you watch back, and which yeah. is what I want. Yeah. So it's like, you've just got to take it for 20 seconds and I can make something magical from that. Yeah. If you're going to be a bit laddie and try and impress your guests and yeah. not say much, it was like, then you've just shot me in the foot. And One of my uh, most, maybe my most recent ones, something I've done in the last six months. Okay. Uh, the groom's speech was read from a phone that had a naked woman on the phone cover. And the second he pulled the phone out, I was like, cool, I'm shooting from the side then. Yeah. Like this is, there's going to be a lot of profile stuff going on in <laughs> here. Um, 
Uh, are there any parts of a wedding day, like even like little things that annoy you? Like, I, so for me, reading phone, uh, reading phones for speeches annoys me because yeah. it's photographically horrible. And when I say annoy, I just mean like as the the videographer in you, not like you personally. Yeah. But is there anything that? Um, should have thought about this. I'm sure there is. So a big part, I don't know if this we're talking about lighting in venues. Yeah. So. I worked with another videographer the other day, and so we call them mingling and can, candid shots. Candid so it's shots, just when yeah. people are chatting, and he referred to it as orange mingles, which I think is absolutely That's perfect. actually really good, yeah, it yeah. And it's because you've got horrible spotlights in the venue that are orange, and when you take a picture or you film someone, if you're not using flash, because a flash takes out the, the dark, poor eyes, yeah, you look okay. Yeah. But on video, I'm just looking at it, I was like, this is horrific. I was like... Surely the venues can see this does not look good. But um it's I reckon cheap. That, yeah, it's literally it's cheap writing. But yeah. there's a there's a local venue to me and they've been listening to what photographers and videographers have been saying about their lighting. Oh my god, you know, I've been saying this for so long. Yeah. They should just talk to people well, that are showing venue, it. The venue have and they've changed they've added a really nice big light in one of the in the main sort of hall. Yeah. And they've got a beautiful cobble bridge over a little <laughs> like a little river sort yeah. of thing that goes around the venue and they've put some beautiful fairy lights on it and which everyone's been recommending them to do and they've done it and all the all the venues need to do is just listen to us a little bit and buy expensive bulbs yeah. when even if you're going to have crap lighting please don't have like three different color temperatures yeah. from the different bulbs that's that's one yeah. thing that gets me i always call them shadows with noses when you get the spotlight <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, <sighs> There's Old Thorns is a golf yeah. club in Southampton. The one of their ceremony, I think they have like a few ceremony rooms. One of their ceremony rooms, it's just like, could you just put a decent light where the yeah. couple are going to stand at least, please? Yeah. Like I want this to look good. You will get more business if this looks good. Yeah. Everyone wins. That's it. Yeah. Nobody loses, and you're obviously earning money. Yeah. And in the grand scale of things, a couple of light bulbs, it's not going to cost them that much nah. compared to how much a couple pay. Yeah. Uh, and and. Because weddings is obviously like a fluid thing. You're going to do more and more and more. You don't yeah. just sell it once. It will pay for itself over and over and over again. Yeah. The little investments like that. Yeah. I think now I'm thinking about it. Everything's flooding back to me. Oh, I think no. guess, yeah, this is it. I'm going to, we need to shut this in a minute. Yeah. Guess on my mobile phone. So it's silly little things like during the ceremony. So if I'm filming, so I film two angles, like I said, two or three angles, a nice wide shot from the back. If like your auntie or something wants to stand up and take a picture or lean out in the aisle and yeah, keep that, snapping leaning pictures. in the aisle is incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, just don't. It was like, we're here to document it. We're going to do it. Don't There's do a it. misconception though on the problem because I've seen people that are, I've seen, I've, I've actually seen like cannibalistic photographers say like, well, if you knew what you were doing, it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. No, the, the action in itself is incredibly selfish because it's saying that I'm willing to ruin this person's wedding photo or video to get a picture on my phone that is poorly composed from a terrible angle on an awful recording device that they'll never see. Yeah. It's not It's not a positive. This is the bit that actually really gets... So I think it's complete... I reckon if we did something like five seconds during the ceremony where everyone could do it, great, get it all over and done with. But the thing that gets me is the fact that it's not going anywhere. So you'll lean out and you'll take that picture yep. and then the couple will never see it. It'll just yeah. sit on your phone forever and then you'll eventually delete it or... You'll go home and like in a week's time you'll be having a cup of tea with like Mildred or something and yeah. they'll say, how was the wedding? And you'll show them that one picture yeah. and then no one will ever see it again. Yeah. When you could easily show them a wedding picture. That's it. And it would have not had your phone in it. That, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I find, the one thing I will say is I find iPads so funny I can't get annoyed at them. Yeah, when you have like the grandparents, they come out with the iPad. Yeah. They think it's got a big screen, it's going to be a really good camera or something. Yeah. And it's, it's watching them hold it like a menu. Yeah. At a restaurant where they <laughs> yeah. haven't brought their reading glasses yeah. and... Yeah, no. I, 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 one thing I do, I to pull the curtain back a little bit. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but something I discovered after a lot of sort of super supervision. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Probably a vast majority of registrars write out or type out the 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 thing word for word, and then they literally read it. That's why they're turning yeah. pages. They have the names typed out. Yeah, they use Comic Sans a lot. Yeah. Like 
you have to select that. It's not like a default choice on a computer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It would be Times New Roman or Arial or something if it was just normal. Yeah. Who do, who is sitting there and they're like, oh, I'll change the font to Comic Sans? I reckon it's a template though. It's just some, they've clearly got one template and it's just, I've seen quite a lot of them now where they don't even type it in. They just, they have it laminated and they write over it with a whiteboard pen. Oh God. Yeah. So oh, in Cambridge, we're not quite as classy, clearly. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I, yeah. Comic Sans is yeah. the height of class. <laughs> um, no, I think what that just means is all the ones I've seen are just wasting a lot more paper. <laughs> yeah. um, are you ready for the changeover to iPads with the ceremonies? Is there not going to be a signed register? It's going to go electronic. Is it? This yeah. is all news to me. It's going to look really good in pictures. Just sign yeah. the iPad, dear. We still have a, they'll, they'll bring the fake book. Yeah, they'll bring or the that'll fake. be on us. We'll have to start bringing fake books. Yeah. To sign. Well, I'll start bringing like, yeah. I'll probably find a funny way to bring along like 50 shades of gray or something and sign <laughs> that. But um, no, they're, they're talking about the register going completely digital. Oh, wow. Which can't be hacked at all or could oh, possibly no, no, go wrong. No. Um, but I think it means you don't get a signed copy of your okay ceremony anymore just kind but of- the whole thing about not being able to photograph a registrar yeah is because of gdpr and everything yeah but you can look it up online and it shows you absolutely everything yeah so i don't understand this i always go along with it i'm like yeah of course i'll never film i it. had one videographer that almost got the ceremony voided because he refused to go along with it um wow. in um oh, i wish jimmy was here because she basically just runs my life and she would tell me where I was, <laughs> but it was, I know that the, um, I'm going to name a name because I'm, I'm name edgy and my yeah. name's already on this. Okay. Um, so I can't remember his first name, but his last name was balls. And we found that really funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he, so it was a ceremony. It's in like a, a purpose built wedding barn. Yeah. Um, and again, talk to photographers because where they put it, the sun comes in behind the couple and the couple stand in the sunlight and everyone else is in the darkness, which makes all the pictures look hilarious. Yeah. Um, but he, they, they said to us, no, the usual, no photographing, no filming of the signing. Yep. And I was like, that's cool. I Like I did, I know you wouldn't have seen this. So, because we had such an unusual one, but I always say the same thing to registrars on, on the most, on most cases, I'll yeah. say, I'll be at the bottom of the aisle. When you're done, wave me back. Yeah. Then there's no worry that I'm there like hip shotting or anything stupid like yeah, that. Yeah. There's no me hovering and trying to speed the process up. Yeah. Just call me up when you need me. I'm out the way. Also, people, even though they're told not to, will stand up with their phones and take pictures. I'm then not in those pictures, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. So um, I say that and the woman said to me, no, no, I want you to stand... So top of the aisle, the table's to the left. Yeah. They wanted me to stand over to the right with the videographer, not go to the bottom of the aisle because they wouldn't have been able to see us because of how bright the sun was. Okay. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll go stand over there. So I'm stood over there and the videographer's holding his camera on the monopod and he's zooming in and he's like, you know, like concentration face, like tongue yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And the registrar watched him do it and walked over and said, I said, you can't film this. Yeah. And he's still looking down like... Like she's blind and can't see what he's doing. Or well, he's got serious balls. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. And he's still looking down and staring at the screen. And yeah. he said, I'm not. <laughs> and it's like, there's, it's on, I think it was on a Sony. So you've got the red, the red thing on the screen at least yeah. that shows you it's recording. Yeah. I think, you know, anyone could decode that mystery. <laughs> and she said, if you don't turn your camera away, I'm going to avoid the ceremony. Yeah. And then he finally turned the camera away and turned around to me and went, can you believe that woman? <laughs> and I was like, you, I can't believe you. As if you do. <sighs> so it's from, from the there, bit, really. so from there, that was, that was in my head. I was like, that'll be a funny story. I tell Jamila when we get outside. Yeah. We go and wait halfway up the aisle for the walkout. And, um, everyone's asked to stand up and one person, um, no phone yeah. leaned right to yeah. look at the bride and groom from about halfway back yeah and the videographer went oh i thought we said no one was supposed to be in the aisles and this woman's turned around like terrified and was like oh sorry <laughs> and then i realized people were looking at me <laughs> they I was like, no, no no him him me different yeah. him his problem him yeah. he's got his name on his car i'll show you where it is not me yeah. and the whole and one of the things he said to me was with the confetti he said uh 
Um, are you all right with like shooting long for the confetti? Now, the conf normally, if the videographer says they want to shoot long, it means we both shoot long, we stay static, yeah. they walk towards us. I don't have a problem with that. Yep. There is a thing called physics, and this was a winding path. <laughs> I can't shoot round the corner, so I have to walk. Yeah, um, I have one of those, you know, linear, straightforward, normal cameras. I don't have an other dimensional camera. All you and do is you get guests to hold mirrors around every corner. And you get, see, you line this it is up. why videographers are smarter than photographers. Yeah, I buy mirrorless. Oh. Uh, nice. Thank you. Um, so I was like, no, because we won't be able to get anything because it's a winding path. And he went, but I didn't bring my steady cam. And I was like, that's nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to carry on doing my yeah. job, but yeah. you know, I'll, I'll be sure to pour one out for you later on. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Um, so you said generally you have pretty positive experiences with photographers. Yeah. Do you find, um, do you see a lot of different styles of photographer in the way they work? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a lot. So I think the trick is I let them lead quite a lot. So when it comes to like confetti, I, like, you know, confetti, you either have a line or you do the horseshoe, effectively. Right. Yep. I think the horseshoe looks absolutely horrific and I hate it. Yeah, won't but, do um, it. Yeah. But, so I'll see what the photographer wants to do. Like, what are we doing? We, do you want to do a horseshoe or do we want to do like a, a line of people? And if they go for horseshoe, I'll always sort of try and persuade them, but I let them lead the big decisions. Yeah. And then I let them feel, because I sort of think they're, to an extent, they're sort of still the main priority. Obviously, I still need to get what I need to get. Yeah. But, I'll let them call some of the big shots. I'll obviously put, give them an input and everything, but I think that lets them, that sort of strokes their ego a bit, like makes them happy. You have a really passive aggressive and they'll go like, no, I think I'll do a horseshoe. And you go, oh, that's great. It's ruined their day. <laughs> just walk <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, but I it, it, just do it another way. I'm like, oh yeah, that's great. But the bride was telling me she absolutely hated the horseshoe. Like, and we're like, Oh, really? And it's like, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. How did you manage to convince her? Because she was saying that she'd kill anyone that told her she had to do the horseshoe. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I won't do the horseshoe. No, at all. Just, I just will not do it. I don't like it. I, it's the movement of walking down the aisle. It's really nice, I think. Yeah. But then the guests just obviously need to throw it above them and not in their face. So <laughs> else it's just. Yeah. I mean, I have, um, I do a little talk before. People walk yeah. down. I oh, yeah, to let them know. I say like, please don't throw your phone because yeah. I have actually seen it yeah. where they've gone to throw confetti, but they've thrown oh, with the wrong hand that's and me. that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. But I always say to them, look at someone on the other side. Yeah. They're your enemy. Yeah. That's who you're throwing okay. at. So go over the top and hit them. Yeah. And that generally as well, that gets people involved. I think yeah. elements like weather and wanting to have a drink or a smoke or whatever disappear yeah. when people are actually being engaged with. Definitely. When you're just stood there holding confetti and no one's talking and then they walk down and you throw it. Yeah. Then it's like, how quickly can I get to a bar or to a, to a smoking area or whatever? Yeah. Um, what about when it comes to like couples stuff? Do you find, do you ever find you've got photographers that won't let you kind of interact with that part of the day? Luckily, no. So I've heard, like, I've heard quite a few horror stories of photographers saying, that, um, no, you're not allowed to come along with us. You've got to have your own separate time. And it's just, I think it gets interferes with a couple a bit because I think then you've got to allow extra time. So I always, always ask the photographer if I can do this. And then before they can even answer me, <laughs> I quickly sneak in and go, I'll, I'll let you do everything you want to do. And then as soon as you're finished, if there's anything extra, which I need, which I highly doubt, I was like, I'll take them for about five minutes to do that. So I won't get in your way. I'll let you do whatever you need to do. Yeah. But I was like, but just be mindful. I need some movement. So if, if you like send them for a walk or anything like that, that's the sort of stuff that comes, that really helps me. Yeah. And then at that point, they've normally like realized, oh, okay, yeah, he's not going to get in our way or anything. He'll be fine. And they will say, yes, I haven't had a single no yet. Right. But I quite often. We've knowed people. Yeah. You, this is it. You ever, you told me. Yeah. You told me, yes, you'd let me, but you say you normally don't. And I was like, oh. I think normally don't is, is probably a little bit hyperbolic. I'd okay. say there are occasions where, um, the mannerism of the videographer means I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do. Yeah. And the thing is we work to a speed where you'll have loads of time Yeah, and you, we can, we can literally hand the baton over and walk away. Cause I say one thing I noticed was the amount of time we had with a couple was it's probably the shortest time I've ever been with a couple of couple shots, but it's the most usable footage I've ever got out of. Right. Even if 
So I think we were with them for about 15 minutes tops, maybe 20. Um, I think it was about 20 when you include walking around the lake and, yeah. and that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's- but what we got in that, I've done, I've done a wedding where we had very loud an hour and a half of a couple. And it was, the photographer was struggling. So you had to be so creative and I was struggling to think of things as well. And I got more out of our 20 minute session than I did with, than with an hour and a half. Yeah. And it was, I think the way you and yourself and Jamila and me were interacting with a couple, they were so relaxed and they were always smiling, laughing at each other. They felt, they felt so relaxed around all of us. Yeah. It was everything which is pure gold. And to, they were, what helps is very an attractive couple too. So yeah, it was, yeah, good looking it looks at it and I was just like, this is easily going on the website. I know this. Yeah, we had a good day sunrise. Yeah. And yeah well, do you not remember I said to the couple, I was like, um, I'm not supposed to say this, but you guys are adding me a lot of money right now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I think you plant the seeds with regard to like direction early in like bride yeah. prep, how you interact with the bride early will dictate what you can get yeah. later on in the day. Um, one thing I would say is men often underestimate women. Yeah. And they think that if you just compliment a woman, the woman will be like, oh my God, he's so lovely. When in actual fact, most of the time compliments can have much different connotations and okay. like it can seem like you're being creepy yeah. or false or whatever. I'm not someone that comes in and I'm like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Everything's, yeah. I, I, my way of complimenting is kind of cheeky yeah, and a little bit more, not backhanded because that would be horrendous, but like saying you guys are earning me so much money right now. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I'll say like, um, you know, I'll say something to the effect of like, you know, this wedding's been put together for my website. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I, I also do stuff where I'll just say like, I'm done. Uh, the, you know, I, at this point I'm just, you know, you're just kicking an orphan. This is too easy. And you can kind <laughs> of get away because it's got like a dark side to it. And it's got yeah. a bit of a silly side to it. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things for definite is just learn a button quite quickly learn something that they like learn something that they don't like yeah you know when you get a couple one of the things that i've been using a lot lately when you get a couple that are really really awkward together and i now do this at pretty much every wedding so it's not really worth decoding who i mean by that <laughs> but but something that works really well with with couples that are very awkward in front of people together yeah is to just say to give them something absolutely ridiculous to focus on so I'm like, right, um, looking at each other, lovely. If you just put your hands here, that's it. Look like you like each other. Um, and I need you to just left eye only. And don't explain even what you mean by left yeah. eye only. And then they're like, what does he mean? And they'll start talking. Yeah. Then one of them will be like, this guy's really weird. And they'll laugh. Yeah. And then you get that picture. Yeah. Or they'll ask you what you mean. And you're like, how do you not know what I mean? This is so easy. And like, but I've never modeled before. And you can, yeah. you can have a bit of banter with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, just... The, I've seen one photographer do the whole look look off into the distance and think about your future, yeah. and I'm just like, the fuck wants to do that? Like, do you know what British people are like? We don't do <laughs> yeah. look off into the future and not do something sarcastic straight yeah. afterwards. You know, what one one thing I think that is really bad with photography and not videography is yeah. the inability to show mood okay yeah which is why i think there was that photographic style where it was like arms by side stood next to each other or one looking one way one looking the other way and yeah. everything was expression this is like a fashion shirt yeah and videography is much better at getting expression emotion is so easy to put the emotion across in a video yeah but well one thing i have to ask because i don't know for sure yeah. um when you're doing like couple sessions are you hoping that it's quiet and that you'll be able to include audio or is that music over the top always it's pretty much always music over the top if right. i ever do add any sort of audio it's never the couple speaking it's always sort of rustling of oh, i see and it's always stock sound <laughs> to make it seem like it was what was going on at yeah. the time so um it depends i don't do it for every wedding it depends on sort of the mood of a video yeah. and but quite sometimes for like drone footage so the drones don't record any sound at all, but you'll have 
quite often there'll be wind blowing in the drone footage oh, <laughs> when yeah. you see it on the screen. Mm. Yeah. Just that whoosh, like rustling of wind and yeah. maybe a few birds cheeping. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't recorded at all, which <laughs> is placed in there. Yeah. Well, drones don't sound great. No, they sound, they sound horrific. From on board, yeah. it's not a good... No, it's just literally like a swarm of angry bees. <laughs> you ever worry you're going to get the wrong stuck sound and just have someone in the background just go in, there's a drone up there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> well, you could put in like spaceship noises. Yeah. And really do like a out. whole airplane thing where all the noises don't make sense with what's going on. Have you seen, there's a video going around on Facebook and it's someone's wedding video has arrived. And so it's for ceremony, but all walking, the bride's walking in. Yeah. And then it flicks to a shot of the guests reacting. And it's, I can't remember what cartoon it is, but they switch to, what's the hand puppets? Um, Punch and Judy. Do you mean? Or? And, oh, I can't remember. It's sort of before my time a little bit. Everything's it's, before your time. You're young. Piss yeah. off. <laughs> Old man. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. There's, there was loads of them. Oh, God knows. Like Sesame Street. Yeah, I think it was Sesame Street. Right. Yeah. And it flicks from showing the bride walking in to showing the guests. And then it's all of the Sesame Street's like little hand puppets. Oh, like my going, God. All laughing and smiling. And the videographer delivered the video like this, didn't tell the couple. And it's like, the reaction is fantastic. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't even be mad. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, what's what's next in terms of like, what's what's your next thing you want to sort of incorporate into your work or? So at the moment I shoot pretty much all of my weddings by myself. Yeah. Um, there is an option to add a second videographer to my packages, but I'm thinking, obviously I'm always trying to improve and working on things. So I've got, I've got loads of little targets for myself to set to constantly improve my videos. But I'm thinking about potentially getting to the point where I'm going to employ a second videographer to come with me for most weddings purely so I can, I think what makes a cinematic video is punching from a really wide shot to a really tight shot. Yeah. And it just always looks incredible. And I've seen, there's one videographer who lives fairly local to me who does it and it looks absolutely incredible. And I think that's going to be the next big thing that I try and incorporate yeah. is to do that. Because I'm only charging an extra £200 to have a second videographer. I actually pay them 250 to £300. So I pay a bit out of my pocket so I don't make it that expensive for couples, but for most weddings, you don't need it. But for some, just things like first dance, it looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. Swapping. And I've tried doing a tripod wide shot and then me on a other camera with a just tight the shot. Same effect. No, some little kid always steps in front of it every, every <laughs> single time. I uh, literally, I've, I put it in a point and I say to a guest, like, can you make sure no one walks in front of this camera? I'm like, yeah, sure. As soon as the first dance starts, they whip out their phone, they start filming. Yeah. They forget my camera's there and a little kid just pops right in front of it. So I reckon... Kill that- all the kids is what you're saying. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not not saying it. Get rid of all the screaming during the ceremony. Yeah. Do you know what? Does it not ever, does it ever really irk you when there's like a kid that is having a full scale meltdown and the parents like holding them in yeah. the ceremony? Take the kid out. I don't get this. And like You're not required. Go ev- away. Everyone is looking at the parent to yeah. remove your child and she's just sat there hand over mouth and it's like, <laughs> you can almost hear the thoughts of everyone looking going, take the kid out. Yeah. No, that, that one, that one drives me mad. It's always like, random friend it's not it's never you're not like yeah. the mum of the bride no. you're not important go outside yeah it's yeah um apart from that it's still i've just got little targets of how i always think i can improve and yeah. i'm always trying to work on how i'm interacting with with my clients as well so i'm always wanting to give them a more personalized feeling so i think that's being a bit more involved before the wedding because so i think potentially I think I could always be a bit more, I don't want to like pest you like, Hey, how's the wedding planning going? Cause I, Hey girl. Yeah. She's like, piss off, leave me alone. It's going good. <laughs> yeah. But I think I just want to sort of sell the experience a bit more and make it a bit more friendly. Um, but, one of the things I really like about, um, one thing that was a big relief actually when I liked you yeah, and then you gave me a card was the fact that you're not called like big moments videography. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. one of those companies. Cause yeah. I just can't stand that shit. <laughs> it's got, I'm going to give this up after 18 months written all over it. Yeah. Um, the fact that your stuff is under your name is, is it Edbray films? Yeah. It just, it keeps things so simple. I know what you do. 
when we talk, I know what your name is. Yeah. You, like, I just find that so much easier. Yeah. Um, I know it's like fun. It reminds me of <clears throat> when, when I was a musician and you would get together and before you played a single note together, you'd be like, what are we going to call the band? <laughs> and it's like that band will never, ever go anywhere or last or probably ever yeah. even play one gig, but you're going to spend like six months coming up with the right name. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, here's an interesting thing for you. So oh, I you're going to change it now to big moments. I originally started under a funky name like that. What was the name? Oh, is there a, Smooth Turtle Weddings. Smooth Turtle Weddings. Do you know how innuendo y that sounds? <laughs> well, yeah, I realise this now. So <laughs> I so obviously I all I'd learned about at uni was all these massive film companies and they're successful and everyone remembers their names. So what are they called? Like Bad Robots, yeah, uh Posh Gecko, all that sort of really cool quirky names. Yeah. I want a cool quirky name. I couldn't think of one, so I came up with Smooth Turtle Weddings. And there was and no reason for it. No, but well, the, the sort of reason was I wanted something. If someone said, who have you booked? You'll never forget the name. And I nailed that. Every couple always knew who I was and that worked really well. Yeah. But obviously I was starting out, so I started off fairly cheap. But as I started to get into the higher end clients, I found some people weren't, they weren't too keen on it and thought it sounded a little bit too childish. Right. So I rebranded about a year ago to Edinburgh Films. And I think, it also sells, it's more of a personal feel. So you know who's going to turn up to your wedding. You know who I am. I'm selling, it's going to sound a bit dodgy. I'm selling myself as an experience. It's so true. I've experienced it. <laughs> and you liked it. I did. Yeah, I've yeah, recommended you to other men. That's it. Yeah. So <laughs> watch out grooms. <laughs> watch out grooms. Smooth turtles coming for you. By the way, so, I'm not going to let that go. No, I oh, see. I was like, "Do I tell him or do I not?" And I was like, "I could, I could tell you here, make you feel like a bit of a dick what you've said, but I don't think that worked." No, no. damn. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I much prefer it. I think it's if like if you look at my website, I think it's quite elegant and it's it all works well and ties in together. Yeah, and yeah. I yeah. think I was. I have a question that I don't know the answer to at all. Yeah. Uh, did you, did you have you ever had or do you have any interest in actually just photographing weddings or is it all video for you? No, all video. So. I enjoy, I enjoy photography as a hobby. So when I go on holiday, I'll take pictures and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But I'd never want to do it at a wedding. So because is it because you're more in a leadership sort of thing no. where you're responsible for more, or it would ruin it, sort of thing. So I used to. Act, <laughs> I know it sounds bad. I used to. Cheers, act, mate. <laughs> I would. Act, Why do you hate my job? <laughs> I, I second shot. I I wanted to see. I wanted some more pictures for my website. I wanted yep. really quite high quality ones. So I approached a local photographer and said, "Can I second shoot for you for a day? So I won't charge you. Just let me lo- let me use my images. You can use them too." And they let me, and. Yeah, I got some great pictures for my website. I was really happy with it. And the photographer said they're amazing. She really liked them. Yeah. But I did enjoy it, but I didn't at the same time. So it was just, it was something completely different. Mm-hmm. Although it's you still using a camera, it's just a completely different experience. Oh, so. it's definitely different in just in how you have to approach yeah. it. But like I, so before I started filming weddings, I really enjoyed making videos. I'd make stupid videos for my mates that would do skateboarding, all sorts of, crazy things we could and it was great fun i absolutely loved doing it but then i think since doing weddings when you do well i don't do as many as you but i do a lot and there's a lot of editing and it gets to a point where it's i wouldn't say i i enjoy my job i really enjoy it but it takes away from the fun of if someone says to me let's go make a video today i'm probably like now nah, i've quite like a break from filming today yeah. and that's sort of what it is so it's I a can, good place to be yeah. though. You you can take it as a net. I, I misjudged what I was feeling. Yeah. When I sort of got to that point where I was like, it's my day off. I don't want to pick up a camera. Yeah. Because on f- for a while, what I did on my day off was pick up a camera. I was like, oh, I've fallen out of love with it. It's like, no, no, I've yeah. just done enough yeah. for the time being. Well, that's it. And I'll enjoy it more if I don't force it now. Yeah. Um, I haven't filmed a wedding in three weeks now. I actually haven't got a wedding for a month now. How lazy are and you? I'm literally, I just, I keep looking you keep at my looking camera. keep looking at my lens. Yeah, I keep looking at your cameras. I look at my cameras all the time and I'm like, I want to go out and play with them. I want to go film something. Yeah. And this is, I think when you're creative, you always need a break. And, and once you've had a break, 
you're sort of ready to go again. You, yeah, that's sort of it. Yeah. So with photography, it's, I like doing it, but it's just, it's different at a wedding and I just like keeping it. And also I get, I get recommended by photographers quite a bit. So if I started offering. You mean I'm not the first. You're not the first. I have. I mean, obviously, well, you saw the charm of a wedding day and everything. So yeah. Um, obviously if I started doing that, <laughs> step on your toes, but I, I, yeah, I just prefer video overall in general. It's, it's so easy to play upon people's emotions with a video. Yeah. And I think obviously you deliver photos absolutely spectacular, but it's I think what you can do with a, that's right. We do with a video is quite different. No, I, 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 I think that you just have to approach it differently. I don't think you can do, um, I don't think you can get good photos in the way that you approach video. And I don't think I could get any usable video <laughs> in the way that I approach photos. You're quite quick. <laughs> yeah. I got told off yesterday for that. Um, it's, uh, it's just a different medium. And I think people lump it yeah. together because it's both it's on the a camera. camera. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, you can do photo. You can do video, right? And it's like, oh. I tried last year. I did two or three weddings where I did like B-roll between shooting yeah. and it was the couple didn't know or what they knew was that I was going to be doing it, but there was no delivery promises. Yeah. Um, and as much as I enjoyed producing something that looked like a video version of my photos, yeah, I realized that there are points in the day where I would have to completely relearn how I interact with it. Yeah. The couple stuff, for instance, my the way I structure the way I work with couples is I need about three seconds out of you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna get, as the fucking assholes on Radio One call it, a banger. Yeah. I know I'm gonna get it if I get that, but I need 20 seconds of it in a video and I don't yeah. know how to do that. I, I, yeah. So when I was working with you, I noticed you you do really quick and short bits. So I, I always film in slow motion. So if I, <laughs> it's handy. No, no, yeah, literally. So <laughs> if you, if only get a couple of seconds, I can drag that out to five. Right. So, like, so that's, I did that quite a bit whilst working with you, but then it was quite a lot of great shots I got of that couple were actually with them talking to you. So they were still looking at each other, but you were, so if you listen back to the video, you're cracking jokes and making them laugh. And Never released or, the audio. Or they're laughing at you for something stupid you've said. Yeah. And, those moments just come across great because they're they're having a great time together. Yeah, it doesn't matter why they're having a good time. So you I know think- what one of the, one of the okay, not I'm not in no way am I like funny or professionally yeah. funny or an expert on being funny. But one thing that is dramatically unfunny and something that people that think they're funny do all the time is they talk down. They talk from like a position of intelligence. They talk from a position of power or whatever, and. Most of the time, no one, no one wants to feel lower than you. Yeah. No one's going to find that funny. <laughs> no. So quite often it's about me taking the piss out of myself Yeah, or me, you know, like I, I've, I've make jokes about the fact that I'm bald, yeah. which I'm not, but I'll make jokes about the fact that I'm bald or I'll make jokes about the fact that I'm fat, which I am, <laughs> or I'll make jokes about me and Jamila. Like I'll, I'll, one of the things that, so me and Jamila had this thing a while back where she actually said to me, she goes, some of the jokes that you make at weddings are a bit mean to me. And I was like, which one? And she sort of talked through and I was like, okay, yeah. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I absolutely believe with, and if I'm wrong, I'll stop it. Yeah. No one's hearing me make, and I'm not saying anything horrible, but well, you've heard me, but yeah. no one is listening to it and thinking he's the good guy in that situation. Yeah. I know I'm vilifying myself in the way that I talk, yeah. which is the joke. The joke isn't what I'm saying. It's the position I'm putting myself in as a person, the character of myself. Yeah. What you're saying isn't horrible about Jamila. Yeah. I mean, it makes you sound like a bit of an arsehole, but it's funny. <laughs> you're lovely. Thank you. Um, but it's, it's about me coming across a certain way. Yeah. And then what I follow it up with is what gets the reactions. Yeah. And when Jamila barks back at me and when she calls me, yeah. whatever she calls me, it see you a laugh. Thing because yeah, that's it. the funny moment and I can photograph while she does that yeah um I, it's just something I've always found I've seen I've done a like you say with videographers you don't see a lot of them because you're the videographer yeah. and I don't see a lot of photographers because I'm the photographer but I've this year I've had two videographers that have both thought the funniest things they could say were demeaning to either the couple 
Christ. or to someone else who was in a disadvantaged position. <laughs> Hmm. And it's like, and you can see the couple are just like, well, my feelings hurt yeah. now. So, great. you know, they, they, they instantly put up another wall. Yeah. Right. And I just, I, I'm i not funny. Yeah, It's just about, sometimes it's just about putting yourself down and, yeah. and being a little bit self-deprecating and getting a laugh that way. I, yeah, I quite often say, warn the couples in advance and they say, oh, we're quite nervous about being in front of a camera. And I'm like, well, I, I'm quite a goofy person, so I will... I'll probably do something stupid that'll make you laugh at me at some point throughout the day. And I was yeah. like, that breaks your eyes pretty easily. Yeah. So for instance, I was I started filming bridal prep and then everyone were making jokes about lens caps being left on the camera and I start filming and I look at my camera and was like, my camera's not working, what's going on? And I was freaking out for about 10 seconds, like, oh, I'm going to have to grab the other camera out of the bag. And then of course, the bridesmaid says, your lens cap's still on. I was like, nice. Christ, smooth. Nice. It's bloody smashing it on the floor to try and get it to work. Don't take lens caps anymore. <laughs> Oh, you don't? No. Can't no. Make that mistake. I, we tend to sort of take them in a veiled idea that they're going to end up back on a lens at some point. And at the end of the day, we bring them home and then put them back on the lens. At least you'll bring them home. I went through ah, a stage okay. of buying more and more from Amazon. I nearly, nearly got the subscription thing where I just deliver some every month and they're <laughs> great. That's, um, yeah, no, you've got a problem. I hate to say it. But you've been, you've been fairly mean to me today. So I'm going to say that you have a problem. I reckon photographers steal them. That's, that's what's going on. Quite here. possibly. Yeah. To be honest with you, I could see that. Yeah. I think I took about four of yours. Yeah, I've been I've been eyeing up your lenses. Yeah, and I've got about twenty eight mil, so that would do me a treat. <laughs> um, so when we work together again, yep. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to do all of the things that you've said that you don't like. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to it. I, like I say, um, you are quite comfortably the best videographer I've worked with. Thank you. Um, not just your um, haircut, no, not just your uh, your style of working, but the actual end product as well. Yeah, um, and I do constantly recommend you, and you'll, like I say, you'll you'll be seeing more of me. Um, and I'm really thankful that you've come in because of one thing I have noticed is that people that work in weddings are terrified to have a microphone in front of them and yeah, talk about so. their experiences. Yeah. I mean, if it's a camera, it's a def- it's a completely different game. If you're saying we're filming this, yeah, oh, did you well, not know? Uh, so that's what that is. <laughs> yeah, that that picture of a dog is actually yeah. two cameras. Um, yeah, no, it's it's absolutely fantastic um, to have you in and uh, to look. I've generally really excited to work with you again yeah um, and see more of your work as well i even want you to come along as a second shooter now to get more pictures for your website just so i can actually no harass you i've been i've got loads of revamped the the website the last couple of months fresh videos fresh pictures and it's for the instagram as well so i I need stuff to post on instagram and videos for some reason don't get anywhere near as much reach as photos so i mainly post photos is it because do you think people are just like swiping through yeah uh, yeah, I think, yeah, because you need, you can look at the stats, you never get longer than three seconds watched. Okay. Do you need, for Instagram, you need to have a quick punchy video. Yeah. And wedding video is normally quite slow, cinematic and elegant. And it's, yeah. But, yeah, I could see it. I think um, one thing I've, I've, I was talking to a photographer on Saturday about is that it's really interesting to have uh, BTS stuff. Yeah. That's always, That's, and I'm terrible yeah. at it, but it's yeah. it's something that I always find I'm more interested in not just as a photographer, but just in general. I mean, BTS stuff of um, like food being made or BTS stuff of even like flowers at a wedding, which I've never in my life ever going to touch. But I find interesting to watch how something comes about. Um, And that's always a good way to kind of, to get a bit of extra, as the kids say, content. Um, See, I think what could benefit you guys really well is might have to do this in one of the weddings we work together mm-hmm. is I'll lav mic you up. So oh, we, uh, yes, it's, it's, you'll hear what you say during and right. stick a camera on a tripod to film the couple session. And you stick that on your website to show couples how you interact with them. So I think, you know what will happen though? It'll be one where just nothing's landing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just, it's just the couple just going, what is this guy's problem? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say the way, you, you guys, you and Tramilla got the couple laughing and reacting was incredible. Uh, everything we got was so good from that and they loved being around all of us. So I think if you stuck that on your website, that would, or if you gave them a link to it somehow, yeah. I reckon couples would thrive off that. They'd be like, yeah, this, 
I'll They're think. Funny. I'll think about it until Jim Miller yeah. convinces me it's a terrible yeah. idea. <laughs> it's when oh, you get an, e- yeah. an email the next day from me going, "That was appalling, wasn't it?" I was like, "Well, that's five thousand pounds when I release it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, that. Do you know what that idea you had was brilliant? We tried it at a wedding. It's like, yeah, I copyrighted that after I mentioned it. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll just I'll, I'll have you on an Amazon subscription. I just send you banknotes. Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, no, but thank you so much for coming in. Um, we need to do all of the information of where people can find you. Okay. Um, so it's all really simple. It's Ed Bray Films. So E D B R A Y from Films. So on Instagram, Ed Bray Films, Facebook, Ed Bray Films. And then website is edbrayfilms.co.uk. Everyone should book you immediately. Thank you. I hope you do.